All right, it's the next day, and so I actually kind of want to change into another outfit and check on Kyle. I realized I didn't check on Kyle yesterday. He might be dead. Oh, God, please. Please, please, please. And please don't be, like, cheating on me or something. Well, I, I should have known. He's reading. Look at what he's wearing. Can you believe him? Can you believe him? Sorry, he's just so fucking cute. Kyle, can you believe? What happened? <laughs> I forgot to tell you guys. Oh my God, this is big news. Only my Discord knows. Kyle got a bed. If I gave this to him, I don't remember. I don't remember giving this to him. I really don't. I might have, but I really, I don't think I would have. I really don't think I would have given him this kind of bed. It's a car bed. Not that I don't like the car bed. I just, I don't know, but I'm very proud of him. I'm very proud of him because this has been his bed. This is his bed, y'all. This has been his bed. When he moved here, that was his damn bed. I was like, Kyle, oh, I'm sorry, baby. I was like, Kyle, how much was this? How much was these three amps? What are they, this is probably $10,000 right over here. These types of guitars, they're very expensive. This grand piano, excuse me, this is the same kind of camera that James Cameron shot the Titanic on. I think you could afford a bed. And he was like, you know what? I just, I, I wanna put my money where my heart lies. And he's like, I'll sleep when I'm dead. You know, he's, that's the type of guy he is. He's just, he loves to hear me talk about him. He doesn't care. And so I, I walk in one day and he's got this bed, a car bed. And I'm like, hey, you know what? At least it's a fucking bed. All right. I don't remember giving it to him though. <laughs> I must have, right? I must have given it. Cause do they, do they do that? I'd like to believe that he, he picked it out himself. By the way, if you have seen Mothman, please let me know. We're looking for him. We want him to join our community. He doesn't have to hide. I think that he thinks that we would be scared of him and do tests on him, but we wouldn't. We would, I would set him up a house right in here. I love Mothman. He's my favorite cryptid by far. Like, I really want to find him. But at the same time, obviously, I don't believe in any cryptids. But I love Mothman so much, and I definitely want to find him someday. <laughs> anyway, we're going to just quickly, I want to change into another spooky outfit. I got so many cool, awesome, amazing, beautiful custom codes. I want to use them. And obviously, they'll all be in the description. I love this. Love this. Not going to wear it, though. That's cute, but I don't know. <gasps> so fucking cute. This might be the one, honestly. I just, you know, I want it to be a little bit silly. Ooh. Crazy, super spooky. Whoa, that kind of spooked me a little. <gasps> oh God, so spooky. Whoa, love it. I just want Anka to know that she's coming into a community that loves Halloween. Halloween town, if you will. A Furby, you know what? Not spooky enough. Spooky, don't get me wrong, spooky as hell. <gasps> Friday the 13th, one of my faves. I've seen all of them. I've seen every single one. And you know what? I even like the bad ones. I like Jason X. My favorite, the final chapter, obviously. <gasps> Look at this. How fucking cute. How will I ever choose? I might have to do Totoro. I love this one too. It's good. I like it because it's spooky, but it's got a heart. It's like he's a nice skeleton. Anka's new goth girlfriend, maybe. Oh my God, I just noticed the green. What is that called? The thing on your neck. I don't know the neck. I think we gotta go with this. Why do I have two of these? Come on, she's a hoarder. Get her help. Call TLC. What else was I gonna do? Wasn't I gonna check on something else really quick? You're doing great. I love you, but to be honest, I'm not gonna lie. I hate to say this. Let's let's wait till we're out. Let's wait till we're out of town. I feel really bad. I do. I love Bianca. I know you guys know what I'm gonna say. Where's he going? I'm not that girlfriend. <laughs> he can do whatever he wants. He's an adult. How many tickets? I have nine tickets. <sighs> I gotta go get some more, just so we can keep going, so I don't have to waste any time. So, the thing with Bianca, right, is that I love her. I do not get me wrong, I love the girl. I will always love her. And I, I will always love you. <laughs> will always love you. My darling, you. <laughs> yeah, bittersweet memories, that's all she's gonna take with her when she leaves because she just doesn't do anything. Never, she doesn't do anything. I've kind of, I've kind of like baited her a few times, not gonna lie. I'm toxic. I'm gonna fully admit it. I'm the bad guy here. I don't want anybody saying she's actually so fucking mean. I know, I'm not trying to paint myself as the hero. I told you straight up from the beginning, I'm kind of a piece of shit, but like not really, not in real life. I feel like I'm a good friend. <laughs> In real life. And I do love these people and I'm acknowledging that Bianca is the winner. I'm the loser. My island is not a place that anybody wants to end up, <laughs> okay? We need her to be cranking out more than she is. And you know what? You know what I think it is? I think it's just that this is an island that is 
putting a lot of pressure on her. I think she's just trying to live her goddamn life. It's kind of like, this isn't what I'm going for, but at the same time, I guess it's the same concept. It would be like some random normal person trying to live their life every day at the Hype House or one of those houses, you know, at one of those houses that you gotta be like acting a certain way. <gasps> Maple! Oh my God, I love her so much. And she, you know what? She wouldn't be a good fit for us. I don't think. I love Maple. Don't get me wrong. I ab Maple, just wanna let you know, I love you, you're doing great. I have a few normal villagers, you know? Like Marina, for example. Let's talk about Marina. Marina is unproblematic. She will never be petty to you. However, she's very dramatic. <laughs> she gets sick all the time. That's the flavor that she adds to my little soap opera spice of an island. You know what I mean? She's always sick. She might die. Then there's Lily. Lily's very dramatic. Lily is very sensitive. Too so sensitive that she thinks like if you tell her, hey Lily, I'm going on vacation. I won't be around for a while. Then you come back a week later, back from your vacation, she's like, <laughs> what did I do wrong? Why did you leave? Like, she's so dramatic. So I love her. And she's also, I just need a frog. I need a frog. It wouldn't even matter if she was doing nothing. I still need a frog because frogs are my fave. Then there's Bianca. And Bianca, to her credit, has managed to be both a peppy villager and completely unproblematic. So great for her. Great for her. I couldn't be more happy for her and proud of her. Who is this? Who is this? Oh, Serrano. And you know what, Serrano? I used to think you were cool, but then I watched the Animal Crossing movie. You were a piece of shit to Apollo. Stay here until you learn your lesson. I don't think that you should be an active member of anybody's community until you can learn how to treat people. Don't walk away from me. You're a piece of shit. You and Caesar. You guys are grown ass adults making fun of children and Apollo. And he's got his heart broken. F you, Serrano. I don't want to see your ass again. Anyway, that he's just problematic in that movie, you know? But who isn't, honestly? Who isn't? <laughs> Everybody's a damn mess in that movie. The page, if you just go on my Patreon at any level, you can watch me trash it. I'm not gonna do that here. And at the same time, I loved the movie. I don't, I don't just trash it. Anyway, what was I saying? So I just feel like Bianca needs a more gentle place to live. I think she needs a, a place to live where everybody's just doing their thing every day. She needs to go to one of those cottage core ass little, is that what they call that? Islands, like the little aesthetic. That's where she needs to go. So she's, I think, gonna be nice. I think I'm gonna let her go. I feel really bad, but I think I'm gonna let her go. I feel bad, I really do, but I need drama. <laughs> I think Anka's gonna be great for that. I really do. It's like, as if I as if I need a Q&A. I'm good with just my own fucking, <gasps> oh, Tad, I haven't seen him yet. He's my ex, actually. Isn't that funny? He's kind of my ex, not gonna lie. Tad, you look better than ever. I haven't seen him since the original ass game. Do you remember me? I might look different, I think you do too. Do you remember me? He's like, no. <laughs> what a cutie. He remembers my abs. Tad, you know what? We're friends, okay? I don't want you talking about my damn abs. I'm happy with another man. But I love you, I'm so glad you're doing okay. I gotta get a picture with him. Tad, come on, for old times sake, just one. Just one, I don't wanna embarrass ya. Look at us, we're so cute. How cute is that? Oh, me and my ex, you know, you know? Great to see that you're doing well, Tad. I love Tad. Tad's very underrated. He's a little bit of a, a little bit of a fuck boy. He's, I mean, he's a jock. What do you expect? But he's a good guy, and I'm glad that he's doing well. He he deserves he deserves it, you know. And so do I. We both do. Uh, my girl Cheyenne asks, how do you discover Animal Crossing and what impact has it made on you? I love this. I've been playing Animal Crossing since the first original game, and I played it so much all day and all night. There was at least one, if not two summers that I literally played it the whole entire summer, every day, all day in a beanbag chair. And it really honestly, cause it's just such a nice game of like friendship. Oh my God, there she is. Fuck me up, Renee, Fuck me up. Every damn time, look at her. Ah, oh, Renee, I kinda can't handle ya. Oh my God, the hair over the eye. Is she serious? She didn't, she didn't. <laughs> And yet she did. Unbelievable. I kind of want to have her come to my island. I'm not going to. But isn't she just sickening? Renee, come on. She could take me or leave me. Is she a bad bitch or what? She's sisterly. No way. I forgot about the sisterly ones. I forgot about the sisterly ones. Holy shit. Yeah, they're just sisterly ones. Bye, Renee. She's sisterly. Would I be a sisterly? Probably not. Would I? 
Oh, but no, Animal Crossing is, it's made such a, such a positive impact on my life. I can't even begin to tell you. Like, so the original game really did like keep me company. I was a very, I was a pretty lonely child, especially at that point in my life. This was before I really had like any friends at all. There was like a good two grades of my life where I had like no friends. <laughs> like I had like, you know, little friends at school, but nobody ever invited me to like birthday parties. I just couldn't really like interact with people, <laughs> if you can imagine. And so it actually really was like my friends like I had friends and it was really nice and like we had inside jokes and it was really really instrumental in like keeping me company at a time where I was really lonely and then now I mean oh my god it changed my life I mean point blank end of the story like absolutely changed my life it gave me the confidence to do so many other things like I've always wanted to do YouTube I've always wanted to like be I don't know I've just always wanted to do this kind of stuff but I just, I don't know, I didn't really have like a, like an angle. And so I love that I can educate people. <gasps> Brafina, she'll kill me. She'll kill me if I'm not careful, but I love her. Hi, Brafina. Another bad bitch. This might be a baddie streak. Maybe it'll end in Anka. I hope it does. I, I hope we're on a baddie streak. How fun would it be if next was like Diana or something? Brafina's a bad bitch. She reminds me of Jessica Lang. Like, anytime in any role <laughs> she's always i was gonna say like american horror story jessica lang but she's always like that she's typecast for sure and she's so good at it i love her can you imagine if jessica lang was like your grandma somebody out there's got to be jessica lang's grandchild right she's got to have grandkids what a bad bitch she's 71 jessica lang is hotter than i'll ever be and she's 70 she was born in 1949 no <laughs> i don't think so are you kidding me? How how hot is Jessica Lang? <laughs> she's such a baddie. She's she's the the original baddie. Is she serious? Is she serious? Yeah, that's who Burfina reminds me of every time. <gasps> Not a baddie. <laughs> unfortunately. But I love that the baby's emo. Oh my God, look at the little emo baby. <laughs> so Carly asked, if you hadn't discovered that you wanted to be a zoologist, what other career would you have wanted to do? That's such a great question because I do want other careers. That's my plight. And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing, but it kind of is, it's like in the opposite end of the spectrum. I know that there's a lot of people out there who struggle to figure out what they wanna do with their life. It's, I totally get that. They just are not sure if anything's calling to them. I have the opposite of that. <laughs> problem and like I said I'm not complaining I want to do so many things and not only do I like want to do them like oh cute I want to do them so bad I want it I dream a whole life of it so one of them is animals like being a wildlife conservationist but I also have always wanted to be like an actress or a comedian or a singer <laughs> like an entertainer I guess you could call oh, that's so sad See, I have imposter syndrome really bad. So I'm like, are you kidding me, Amanda? Really? Sit the f down. Like, I'm so, uh, I'm cringing at myself. But I mean, I have. I've always like dreamed of myself. I don't know. It's stupid. Oh, it's so stupid. It sounds stupid. Uh, but it's not. But it is. But it's not. But it is. But it's kind of, uh, I don't know. And then my one of my greatest passions, I mean, it's right up there with the animals and everything else. But even more than that, I am so, so, so passionate about writing. I love writing fiction, both novels and screenplays. I would love to be an author <laughs> and write books. And I know I can do that that's that's the great thing about being an author is i've written i'll talk about that a little bit more but oh fuck <laughs> no way okay <laughs> wow that's interesting so i guess it is a baddie streak you know what out of all the kangaroos yeah this is a baddie streak we're officially on a baddie streak wow hi judy i'm sorry that i just got judy like this what's up judy how cute are you? Judy's beautiful. You know I love Judy, obviously. Anyway, I love writing. I love, 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 love writing. It's my greatest joy, I think, out of everything. I mean, like I love animals and being in nature, but I love writing. I love it. I'm constantly, I would say 24 seven, seven days a week. I'm thinking about my stories, stories in my head. I'm just constantly creating and writing stories. Someday I'll tell you all about it. And I think there's a couple questions that will allow me to talk more about it. Oh, by the way, that was Judy. Did I acknowledge that? That's Judy. Hi, Judy. She's beautiful, love her. Cotton candy princess. That was big ADD energy, holy shit. But that's the thing, it's like I have ADD, so I'm like, like my biggest, I wish, so, I wish I just didn't have to sleep. I think that would save me a lot of time. If I was a vampire and I didn't have to sleep, that would save me so much goddamn time. I feel like it's such a waste of time. To be fair, sleeping is important. 
I, I don't, I value sleeping. I like to be able to sleep. And when I can't sleep, I get really anxious and I hate it. I don't like to not sleep. I'm not uh, trying to romanticize not sleeping. I have insomnia, I actually do have insomnia too. And when I can't sleep, I just feel it killing me. Cause one time in like psychology class, my teacher said that you could die if you don't sleep enough. So I'm like, I'm dying. <laughs> I like to be able to get a good night's sleep. I, I totally recognize how important it is for your health. I just wish that it wasn't. I wish that it was optional because I would save so much time. That would be all, all the time I would need to do everything I want to do. So yeah, I want to be like a writer of novels. Hi, Buzz. Buzz is cute. He's very handsome. He ain't no Apollo, but he's handsome. He's a golden eagle. Anyway, uh, I want to be, so yeah, like a writer of books and novels. Obviously was always writing fanfics growing up of so many different fandoms. I don't even have time to go over all that with you. Plus, I'm just embarrassed. No, I'm just kidding. But kind of not really anyway I love writing books novels whatever short stories but I also really love writing screenplays and I love movies in general so love them so 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 much I watch movies constantly I'm constantly watching movies and I would love to direct movies like I'm I'm not I know I sound like I know I sound weird I sound like I'm too big for my britches I'm just a very creative person. That even that sounds like shitty to say. Do I sound like a piece of shit? That's I'm 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 not saying like I'm so creative and amazing. Like my shit could suck. You guys could read it and it could like I, I feel I I'm proud of it. I don't think it sucks, but y'all might not like it and that's fine. She's adorable. Peanut's adorable. She's so cute. But anyway, yeah, I really have so many things I want to do. I would love to be able to sustain myself through my creative stuff and not get any money for helping animals. Because I would love for other people who just want to work with animals to be able to make a living on that. Because it's so hard to make a living on working with animals. And I would, I, would, I would feel bad taking money from that if there's something else I can do to make money that I enjoy. If that makes any sense. So my ideal life, honestly, would be to be a creative person. Like maybe do these YouTube videos, maybe writing, and, and then in, my, in any free time, volunteering. I would love to just volunteer all of my free time to animals. I'm never ever ever no matter how good all of this stuff goes and i'm not saying it's gonna go i'm not like planning for this at all that's why i'm so 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 lucky to be able to be working such an amazing job that i would never want to leave ever but at the same time it's truly my passion doing this creative stuff it's it makes me so happy the fact that it makes other people happy is beyond my wildest dreams but it, they are my wildest dreams like that's exactly what they are and so ideally i would be making my income through my creative stuff and just donating all of my time and probably all of my money <laughs> too because I just love animals and I want better for them. So, oh God, Beardo, are you kidding me? Beardo, why don't you stay over there? I'll stay over here. He doesn't even have a goddamn beard. And look at the pubes. I'm out of here forever. Yeah, I guess the baddie streak is over. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, I, yeah, so I would love to be able to donate my time and money <laughs> to animals. That will never change, ever ever. Hi Drago. I love him. He's so cute. He's so, he doesn't give a shit. He does not care. Look at him. He's like, <laughs> yeah, she's totally judging me. She might hit me so I can get him a thousand times on a villager hunt, but no sign of Anka. Are you kidding me? You know what, Del? I'm done. What should I do? <laughs> Del is a boat. He's a goddamn boat. Look at the windows. I can't believe it. Why did they make this villager? A boat? A B-O-A-T boat? Really? A boat. Why don't you go hit an iceberg, okay? I'm out of here. <laughs> Del is a boat. Oh, Hans. Hi, Hans. He's a Yeti. I love him. So I'm seeing some friends. This isn't the first time we've met Hans, but I'll forgive you. I love Hans. Oh, Groovy. He says Groovy? Just like Ash from Evil Dead. Groovy. I love you. Oh my God, no, he's giving me Ash vibes. I want him. He's a Yeti who says groovy. Come on, does it get any better? Can't, Anka or bust. Anyway, that was, what, I spent another hour answering one question. That's my style. Yeah, there's lots of things that I wanna do. I will say that I love working with animals, but there are there are lots of lives yet to be lived. I, I feel like I've already lived so many and there's so many more I wanna live. I have so much to do. I have so much to do and I wanna do it all. 
And my ideal situation would be something that would offer me that, to, to uh, the chance to do it all. Okay, wow, what a perfect question to follow that up. Libby, my girl, Libby says, any tips for someone still trying to figure out their passion? So even though I have all these things that I love now, I'll be quite honest with you. I remember when I was in high school, I was about to graduate high school and I still really didn't know what I wanted to do. Even though there's so many things that I love, I didn't think I could do it. So I, I was to the point where I was like, you know, I love all this creative stuff. I love all, I love the animal things. Thing, but could I actually do that? Because I didn't believe in myself. So I was like, what am I gonna do with my life? And I felt really, really conflicted. And so I kind of started school, but I really wasn't in it. I had no idea what I was gonna major in. And so this is me like 17, 18, 19. I didn't decide that I wanted to try to become a wildlife conservationist for real until I was 21. If that makes you feel any better. And still very, very young though. And the way that I decided that was, oh my gosh, Camo Frog. I don't think I've gotten him yet. Oh, Camo Frog. Hi, buddy. He's cute. Anyway, I would say that there's there's gotta be something that you that you love. And maybe you just never thought of it as something you could do. Like maybe you love reading and you're like, I don't know what I wanna do with my life. What do I wanna do? And you just keep reading all these books. You've read book after book after book and you've never really considered, oh, you know what? I could actually be a literary agent and read books for a living. You could do that. I feel like people sell themselves so short and they, I get that it's, it sucks because college, I wish it was way more accessible than it is. It sucks. Like I, I wasn't the type of kid that had anybody who could pay for my college. So I had to get scholarships. I had to either get loans or scholarships. And thankfully, I, I'm so lucky that this worked out for me because for a lot of people, it just doesn't. Like I was really bad in school until I got help for my ADD and stuff. So I get people who just aren't good test takers. School sucks. It's so hard for some people because it's just not, not everybody has the same brain and it doesn't, it's no measure of how smart you are. If you are not doing well in school, that is no measure of how smart you are. I promise. Or whether or not you would be able to achieve your dreams. I think a lot of people, like their confidence has just been shot by the school system. You know, we've all had those teachers that are so shitty to us and make us feel like we're stupid. And I had teachers like that too. And so for the longest time, I was like, why would I even go to college? Like, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna suck at it anyway. Like, it can be really hard. But that's, the, I think the first thing is really, this sounds really cliche, but it's just to like, just to not let it kill your confidence. I think so many people have just been crushed by teachers and just by the school system in general, just not doing well in school so they think that they won't do well in college also is that felicity is that her name felicia felicia felicity whatever she's she's whatever she's fine and there's also no shame whatsoever in pursuing a career in retail or in just a office space you know those jobs are important and they need people not everybody needs to feel the pressure to like go out there and like be their dream job and like you know do this awesome, cool job that is fun to brag about. Those jobs, like, you know, being a, a manager at Target is just as important, you know? And so in, in your life, you're like your passion, following your passion also doesn't have to be a career. You know, if, so if your passion is being a mom, then that's very important too. Of course that's important. Don't let anybody tell you that it's not. Like if it's important to you, then it's important, period. Okay, that's what I want you to remember. If it's important to you, it's important, period. As long as you're being a good person and you're pulling your weight, if it's important to you to like, you know, play video games all day while your partner works, maybe, you know, you know, everybody's got to pull their weight, meet halfway. But as long as you feel fulfilled, you know, that's all that really matters. So if you feel fulfilled because you go, you put in your your your, your hard work at, at, at your job and you are able to provide for your family and that is giving you fulfillment, then that's all that matters. So I would say... Like, you know, not everybody has this thing that's like a passion that they want to turn into a career either. Don't feel pressure to turn something that you love into a career. Oh God, it's Gruff. What a weirdo. Look at the sideburns. What is he going for? Gruff, what are you going for? <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Like, is that a hood or is that his hair? I think it's his hair. I think he's chasing me. Gruff's chasing me. Yikes. Thank God he's slow. I outran him. Wilbur, get me out of here. What were you thinking? You had to have seen him. Ugh. Anyway, um, don't feel pressure to do something big. Don't compare yourself to anybody. That's all very cliche. All of this is very cliche, but just remember if it's important to you, then it's important. And you don't always have to turn something that you love into a career either. Sometimes your career can help you do what you love. Sometimes if you work really hard at your office job, you can come home and you can buy the 
tickets to travel or like the stuff that you like to collect or the video games you love to play and and stuff like that. So it's all about balance. It's all about just finding a way that you can feel fulfilled in your life, whether that's to be a good parent or a good partner or to see the world or to work your dream job or to create something amazing or to, you know, that is what gives us value in life. And obviously we all need to make money too, but we all have to do things that we don't wanna do too. So there's nobody out there, despite what they may tell you, there is nobody out there. Even if they're working their dream job and they tell you they're working their dream job, like me, I'll be, I'll be quite honest with you. Everybody who works their dream job, I, I feel like is like, I'm on vacation every day. I love every day of my life. I love what I do. But sometimes my day consists of bleaching a bunch of shit <laughs> and cleaning out an enclosure and I hardly see any animals all day and I'm just bleaching shit. My hands are all wrinkly. Bruce, he's cute. He's cranky. Bye, Bruce. You know, but like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's not all like, I'm not happy every single day. I'm like, I'm so, I'm so lucky. I'm never, ever gonna take that for granted. I love being able to go into my job every day and see my beautiful, cute froggies and animals. I'm so lucky to have that. However, there are lots of days where it's just work. It's just work. I don't really get to spend a lot of time with the frogs because there's a lot of stuff that needs to be cleaned. I, maybe I need to change this big filter in the air conditioner and that takes two hours. Like that's stuff I have to do too. That's, it's all part of caring for the animals. The other day I had to wash out a bunch of bins of crickets and there was crickets crawling all over me. Sometimes I have to clean out roaches and stuff and put all the roaches in one thing and then clean out their gross thing that they've been living in because the animals eat roaches. There's a lot of like maintenance that I have to do too. And it's like I'm a little frog janitor sometimes. And then sometimes I get to, you know, count baby frog eggs and give frogs little baths and stuff. and release them into the wild and stuff like that. So there's there's good days and bad days, but nobody has a job where they're happy every single day or they're doing stuff that they love every single day. So as long as you are having days that you feel fulfilled, oh, Alfonso, remember I used to hate him? If you watch my review of the movie on Patreon, you'll know that I feel differently. Alfonso, give me a hug. Are you okay? Can you please be careful around this water? You better be careful. Be careful. Should I get you some water wings? I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get you some water wings. I love him. He's so cute in the movie. At the end, at the very end. For the mo the, mo the majority of the movie, he annoys me. But then at the very end, he got me. He got me with that shit. If you know, you know. If not, go over to Patreon and watch. Had to run home and get some more tickets. Look at my little girl. Are you okay? I okay, <laughs> thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God, okay. Thank God, I just wanna see a smile. Blanche, look at you, indulging, love to see it. Love to see my girls indulging. Lily's got some tea, Blanche has got a whole ass, big ass donut. Love to see my girls just living their best life. Awesome, I can't wait till Anka is just walking around. Can you imagine Anka walking around, walking among us? Walking among us mere mortals, I can't even imagine it. Oh my goodness, okay, so how long have you been singing, Archfiend? Tell me your musical journey, what musical journey? Listen, I, I, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing to, to tell. I have been so insecure about my singing for so long. It starts back in elementary school where, you know how like, I don't know if your school did this, but my school did, where they like made you do, like they were assemblies, but they were like little plays. And like some of the special kids would get like a speaking role or like a, like a role where you would play thing. But most of the kids would be like the chorus in the background, like, ha, ba, 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 da, da. like you just do a stupid fucking song. Every single one of those, I would get a speaking role and a singing solo thing where I would sing like a line. And then and then I became a theater kid. Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Is this the fucking blow up doll? Oh, he's so scary. So, so, <laughs> why is this a thing? So, what is his name again? Hobson? Hopkins. I didn't realize this. Y'all let me know. Y'all, y'all, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know that he's a blow up thing. He's a fucking, He's a blow up thing, right? He's got a freaking look. I, I'll, I'll fucking expose him. Turn around, show the world who you really are, imposter. You imposter, get over here. He's trying to hide. Get over here, you imposter. Let me expose you. Let's see. Let's see that fucking thing in the back. Ready? He tried to pull one over on all of us. Turn around, show the world who you really are. God damn. Oh my God, what is that? Oh my god! What is that? What the fuck is that? Why? Why is that a thing? Animal Crossing. 
Explain. Explain yourself. Who the hell? What the hell? I'm out of here. He's a blow up thing and he's walking around. Who the hell? What the hell? I can't. I don't even want to do. I don't want to unpack this. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Oh my god. Okay, anyway. So, you know, I'm in elementary school. I become a, I become a theater kid. I was a theater kid until high school because I'm very fucking insecure. Extremely insecure. I needed validation of my peers and I was way too, and I, I, I'm gonna put my hands on the table and say now I fucking regret it. I regret it, but I wanted to be a cool kid. So I couldn't be caught dead in a play. The last play I ever did was in freshman year of high school and I remember I was like, I hope nobody knows that I'm in this thing. I hope nobody knows, I hope nobody notices, I feel so embarrassed because I had cool friends and they would have been like, what are you doing? You know, if you're a fucking popular kid, I'm talking to the popular kids right now, can you maybe not shame people for being in theater? Because I used to get shamed so hard for being in theater. Like, hello, do you know who was in theater when they were in high school? Fucking Jennifer Aniston, Ryan Reynolds, those are the key theater kids okay so they're only cool to you when they become a famous actor that's where they started I'm sorry I'm so mad at myself for like playing into their game because the the popular kids are so mean to theater kids like they're like what are you doing oh you're in a play like they're just so mean you know don't be mean stop being mean if you're a popular kid stop being mean to people is it that hard stop just stop don't be a bully Okay? It's just not even fucking cool or funny. It's really not. And the people that you're bullying, I guarantee you, they're gonna be happier and more successful than you. Sorry, said what I said. I'm mad at myself. I wasn't a pop, it was never popular. Let's get that straight. But I was so insecure. I just didn't wanna give anybody a reason to bully me because there was already so many reasons. Like I was already just, you know, I wasn't like the prettiest. I I didn't have the coolest clothes because I was poor. I didn't know how to do my fucking eyebrows, my makeup. (laughs) You know, there was so many other reasons to fucking bully me. Is this, if you tell me this is candy with her weird ass eyes, the last thing I need to see, oh, it's candy. I think she's a nice girl though. I don't think she's gonna hurt me. I don't think she means me any harm but you know what candy be yourself how about how about stop drawing on fake eyes to fool people and be yourself that's what i wish i did i wish so badly that i had stuck with theater i really really do i regret it every day of my life i would love nothing more than to be in a play right now but i don't know how like <laughs> like that's the thing about being an adult it's like how f- can i be a theater kid now i wish i could be a theater kid i would love to be in a play i would love it <laughs> but like i can't i can't because that's the thing with being in school and being a kid it's like you get to do shit <laughs> You get to do, like, as an adult, you can't just go and, like, be on a baseball team anymore, you know? Like, yeah, they they exist, but they're harder. I don't know. There's just, like, definitely, like, a a play. There's definitely going to be a play that you can try out for. And and you, you could be in it. Even if you suck, you could still be in the background, and it'll be fun. But that's the thing. I was never in the background. I always had a lot of lines. Not just, like, a speaking role. Every time I was in a play, I had a good fucking part. Every single time, I always had a singing part. I always had a solo. And that should have told me something. That should have told me that I do have a good voice. I can act but I didn't see that I I just I don't know I didn't like value it because nobody else valued it and at the time I was so insecure such an insecure kid I cared so much about what everybody else thought about me and I regret this I really do and I hope if anybody's listening I hope there's like one person if one person's listening to this and has been thinking about stopping doing what they love just because people might make fun of you for it please I'm begging you not to I regret it every day of my life I really do I loved it I loved it and if I had kept going guess what I would have gotten the validation that I needed somewhere else. But instead I stopped and I decided to hang out with these fucking losers. Oh, Twiggy, hi Twiggy, cute little budgie. Hi Twiggy girl. Always, always loved singing. I've always loved music. I wanted so badly to be a musician and I tried so hard to learn how to play the guitar. I played the violin for a few years. I wanted to learn how to play the cello. I, I don't know if it's my ADD or what. I don't know if that's an excuse, but I really did try. I really gave it my best shot because I wanted to be a musician. I think that music, like I've said earlier, like music and playing music and making music, one of the coolest, most incredible things ever. Music is fucking magic. It's like experiencing someone else's brain and heart. I don't even know how to describe it. And like it's, it becomes your own and it matches your, I don't even know. I could go on and on, get all poetic. I wanted so badly to be a musician. I love writing songs. I write tons of lyrics. I could write song after song, but I didn't see myself as a musician for a long time. I was like, I can't play any instruments, so I'm not a musician, but I love singing. And who's this? Oh, it's Jimmy Buffett. What the hell is your name again? What's his name again? I'm going to try to guess it. It's got to be, it's something very weird. His name is like, his name is like, 
what is your name? In Kingston? What the hell is your name? Oh my god, it's something so weird that I'll never guess. I know I'll never guess it. It's so weird, it's so random. What's your name? O'Hare, see it's weird. How the hell was I ever gonna guess that? I'm a rabbit about town. You are Jimmy Buffett. Okay. Wasting away again in Margaritaville. Just like you always are. Get me out of here. I'm not into this Jimmy Buffett thing. Anyway, I love to sing. I really do. And the only person that I ever sang in front of confidently for the longest time was Matt. But he would still, he would joke around with me. Like when I was like singing really loud, he'd be like, shut up, stop. Like, and I thought, and I took that really hard. I was just like, oh, he hates me. He hates when I sing. But then when we'd be in the car, he'd be like, oh, I love that harmony. Do that again. Like, cause he's a musician too. And then when I started doing these villager hunts, like I just noticed that I guess like I just start singing when I'm, when I don't know what else to do or when a song comes to mind. Cause that's kind of how I am in real life. And I just started singing. And then I remember the first villager hunt I uploaded on a, onto YouTube. I was like, you know, I, I noticed that I had sang a little bit in it. And I was like, oh my God, is that, is that cringy? Is that bad? Like, am I gonna get roasted to Matt? And he was like, what? No, what are you talking about? Of course you're not gonna get roasted. Are you crazy? Did you really? Like, I think that this whole time, all, all the, of these seven years, he thought that I just knew. And so that's why he he didn't like gas me up as much as he, like, he, he should have, I guess, because I was so insecure about it. So long story short, I basically just found out that like I'm actually good because this whole time, you know like you watch American Idol and you see these people and they're like, I am the next Kelly Clarkson. I am the next Lady Gaga. I'm so good. And you're like, I wonder if she's actually good. And then she goes on there and she's like, I don't, da, da. and they're so bad. And you're like, how the hell does she not know she sucks? Nobody in her life told her. Fucking no one, no one. She, they're filming her. She's like, singing is my passion. I'm definitely a star. Like she's like, sing, she's like, I've been singing ever since I was three. Like they're so passionate about it. Their whole life, everybody in their life has gone and watched the, their ass sing. And they never said anything. Nobody. It's Sly. I love Sly. He's so cute. I always worried that that was like low key me. Like I was like, am I tone deaf? Do I just not know? Like, is, am I gonna be that person? Because no one had ever, I don't know, I got the singing roles, but I guess nobody had ever just been like, hey, you're really good at singing, except for like my parents. And it's not that that doesn't count, but when somebody loves you and they're close to you, I love him, he's so cute. I love him and I'm close to him and I would pay him every compliment ever. This is the first time in my life I've ever been like confident about my singing and like ever in my life, like really, like I've just been assured. And that's all of you, that's not anybody else else but you but all of you so I just thank you so much because I really truly do love singing I think if I had continued doing theater when I was in high school I think I would have got gained more confidence but I didn't because I wanted the approval of of kids that weren't even as cool as the theater kids oh Walt I have a new appreciation for Walt well how's Rooney doing he's doing okay you're taking care of him because he's your new son you adopted him I love that for you guys I really do I love him he's like my favorite old villager I think he's so cute well God bless ya. God bless ya, Wal. <laughs> He's so cute. Anyway, that's, so now, now that I actually have like some confidence, I would love to sing. I would love to be, in, I've always wanted to like be in a band. I've always wanted to write songs. Like I think that the songs that I've written are good. It's just always this, the singing thing I was worried about because of American Idol, because there's so many people out there who think they're good and they're really not. And it's so sad. It's like, that's why it's so important to be honest with people. I would be so fucking pissed. I can't even tell you. I would never talk to anyone ever again if I sucked at singing and they let me make a fucking ass of myself on American Idol. If my parents sat there and I said, I'm going on American Idol, and they didn't hesitate to say, you you do it, baby. You're gonna knock them all dead. I would never talk to them again. I really, I would be so mad. Like, don't let them make an ass of themselves, please. It's so shitty. Gruff again, out of here. So shitty. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. It's hard to kill somebody's dream. That sucks. I don't even know what's worse. Like to tell them the truth or to just like crush their dreams. I don't know. I don't know. If somebody in your life's about to go on American Idol, but they're tone deaf, be the one to tell them. Please don't make them make an ass of themselves. That's even worse. That's so cruel. I know that you feel like an asshole for saying like, listen, maybe American Idol is not the best place to start. Maybe you want to start with like the local bar and like let them tell them the truth. I don't know, I don't know. It's just on national TV, a laughing stock. If you think about some of those people, they're a meme. Like they're forever ingrained in society as like a bad singer. 
Aw, oh, boots. Hi, boots. Oh, Hamfrey. Every time. Always gotta see Hamfrey. There's other people I can't see, but Hamfrey, get the hell out of here. I'm just kidding. Hamfrey's cute, kind of. I don't know. I just, I feel like he always pops up. I don't want to see him. He knows that. I, I really do regret it. <laughs> not being in musicals, not not attacking an old man, Hamfrey. I wish I hadn't cared what other people thought. That's the thing, it's like those people didn't even care about me and I wanted them, I didn't want them to make fun of me. I couldn't fathom them being like, oh my God, she's in a musical, she's in a play. But anyway, I don't wanna dwell on that. Oh my God, Becky, f me up, Becky. Are you kidding me? God, she's just as gorgeous as she always is. Look at her, she's a vision. She's a prize, look at her, she could care less. Prettiest girl chicken by far, by a long shot. Where the hell is Anka? Is this really gonna be a thing? Did I accidentally say no? Wilbur, get me out of here, absolutely. Are you kidding me? You think I wanna live here? You think I'm moving in? Get me out of here, right now. Oh my God, Emma, are you kidding me? Please tell us more about your writing. I love you guys. Like you listen to me. It's amazing. I don't know. I just, I feel like, I feel like you, I don't know for the longest time. Like I had like a little bit of an Instagram following before I started doing this, but it was all, all about the animals. Everybody always wanted to see the animals. And as much as I love sharing animals, I felt like I could never be myself. I was like, I have this platform. You know, I, I had about like 50,000 followers when I started doing the YouTube thing just for my animal stuff because I'd been sharing all of my animal journeys with everybody and I just kind of amassed like a little bit of an Instagram following. And I was like, maybe they'll buy my book if I get it published. But then I, at the back of my mind, I was like, <sighs> No, because they don't even know me. They don't even know me. They only know the animals. Because anytime I would try to post a picture of like something that's just me, no cool animal there, I didn't. It didn't get any likes. Like nobody cared. And I and it for the longest time, it like permeated itself in my brain, and it, it made me think that the person that I was was shit. Like nobody cared. Nobody was interested in that. They just wanted to see cool animals. But I felt weird about like using animals for for views and for likes. Like I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to be myself, you know? I didn't want to be an animal account. I just wanted to be my, and animals are a part of who I am. Oh, who's that, Peck? Is his name Peck or something? Yeah, Peck. You know, I didn't want to be an animal account. I just wanted to be myself. That's all I ever wanted was just to be myself. And, uh, and so I felt like I was rejected every time I tried to be myself because I had a lot of followers that were only looking for animals. And so I hid a lot of that stuff. In, including the writing, even though it's such a huge part of who I am. And I was like, oh, I wonder if people will like me enough to like check out my like books once I try, once I get them published. And I've always wanted to do self-publishing, but I just didn't think I would be able to sell enough books because at the end of the day, most of my followers were about the animals. And I write like contemporary fiction. Like the book that I, I've, I've written a book completely. It's done, pretty much. I, I have a few things to fix with it, but it's pretty much done. Full book, it took me, it's the it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. The It's the hardest I've ever worked on anything in my life. And it's also, oh my God, I'm gonna get emotional. This is like, it means so much to me. And that's why I'm like so thankful that like people care. Whoa, she's so dramatic. She's so damn dramatic. No, like the fact that you even care enough to ask means so much. She's just so dramatic. <laughs> She's a Libra. No, it's just like, this is, it's the, this is the thing I'm, I'm the most, I'm so proud of it. And I can't wait to share it with you. And uh, it's like literally a contemporary romance. I'll just be like completely frank with you. I love writing. I, I write, you know, just fiction. I write young adult. I would love to write horror at some point, but I wanted to get it traditionally published, which means that you go through publishers, you query agents and they read like a couple pages and they, figure out if they're maybe interested. And then they kind of own it. They give you like a like an advance, but they kind of own it. And I never really felt good about that because when it comes to my the things that I create, I'm very, very particular about them. Very picky. Like I have to edit all my videos myself. Matt was like, oh, do you want me to edit it? And I was like, I need to learn how to edit things. Like I need to be in control. So there was always something weird about traditional publishing for me. I'm not knocking it at all. Like they help you with marketing and it's such a good option. And I'm definitely like working with an agent if you don't know what you're doing, it's like a great thing. But I knew that I, 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 I kind of wished that I had the ability to, oh, it's Nana. Hi, Nana. Bye, Nana. But I had always kind of wished that like I, I, I could have more control. But I knew, I was like, at the end of the day, I know that like my audience, like maybe I can, you know, 
use that in a query letter. A query letter is like basically like a pitch that you give like an agent. You could be like, oh, I have 50,000 followers and just like not mention that they probably <laughs> won't care because they're only there because they're like into snakes. And then I started doing this and then I was like, you know what? Let's put this on hold because like people <laughs> are actually like, they're listening to me. They they like me for me. This is exactly what I always wanted. I am i don't have a snake. I'm just being myself with Animal Crossing and people are listening to me. So maybe I can give it a minute, like just be patient and, you know, show people who I really am. And then maybe they'll wanna, maybe they'll be interested. Maybe they'll wanna read what I, what I, what I wrote, my stories. Maybe they'll see like, you know, maybe they'll like the stories that I tell in Animal Crossing and they'll think like, oh, I wonder what, kind of story she would tell in a novel, you know? And and so that is exactly what's happening. Oh, I see a butt. It must be, is that Boyd? It's Boyd, is that Boyd? Is that, that's Boyd. Yep, good old Boyd. Okay, Boyd, <laughs> have fun out here in the islands. Where the hell is Anka? Come on, I don't have all day, Anka. Anyway, I, I can't tell you how much it means to me that people are literally just like, we like you, because <laughs> I, I I got a lot of validation for the animals. Like, oh, cool snake. Wow, what a beautiful snake. What a cool wildlife thing. But it was, and I know it sounds like I'm like, I wanted it to be all about me. Like I've always just wanted to put the animals front and center, conservation, conservation. And that's why I'm so happy that like, I can do that too. I can talk about animals and, and wildlife and conservation and you want to hear about it and you listen and you love it. That means so much to me. I can't even tell you how much that means to me. I'm like so emotional right now because this is everything I've ever wanted. I don't care if it ever, if it doesn't get any better than that. To, to, to say that it's val it's validated my existence and everything that I've ever wanted to do and everything that I've ever wanted to be is an understatement. Like the comments that I get, you guys are so nice. Like I thought I thought YouTube was so mean. Like I thought I was gonna get roasted. I was like, oh my God, they're gonna roast me. They're gonna send me into a spiral. No. You've changed my life. I, I, I truly can't thank you enough. And I, I'm not gonna stop doing this, I promise. Like I, I didn't post for two weeks because of my capture card and I did the Animal Crossing movie. This is everything to me. It means so much to me. I love doing this. And I have so many ideas and I just love it. And I, anybody who likes to read, like I, I do have a novel that I wrote that I am so, so, so proud of. And I'll tell you more about it when the time is right. But, oh, it's, uh, what's his name? Frober. He's cute. He is cute. He's, his teeth are a little jarring, the, the spots, but he's cute. Good old Frober. You know how I am with stories and stuff. <laughs> I'm just like very dramatic, but also, I don't know, I feel like I can tell a good story. So it'll it'll come along and I promise that it's gonna, it's it's pretty much done. So it, it'll come out, but um, I can't even believe that people are even interested. Like I, I mention it from time to time. And when I used to mention it with the animal stuff, nobody asked, that's the thing. I would mention it when I was just doing just animal posts and I didn't do YouTube, I would mention it all the time. And I'd hope that just like one person would ask but no one ever did, <laughs> no one ever did. And so that told me all I needed to know. But this thing, like you, the fact that you've noticed and you and you ask about it is, is everything. You have no idea how much it means to me. Someday I'll tell you like my story and like how hard it's been for me to even have any sense of, oh, I'm gonna get emotional. And who is this? I'm gonna get emotional in front of friggin', who's this guy again? I'm about to get emotional in front of Monty. <laughs> Y'all are about to make me cry in front of Monty out of all people. No, I just, um, I've been through a lot. Like I really, for a long time, hated myself. I was really insecure, as insecure as somebody could be. Like, I just wanted myself to disappear. And like, there was nothing that I could do. There was nothing that I could do, nothing that I could achieve to make myself like, feel like I was good enough. Ah, she's so dramatic. <laughs> no, but like, you know, someday I'll tell you, I don't want to get into it because you guys didn't come here for this and it could be triggering, but there's a lot of things that I have overcome that, you know, to even have any semblance of self-worth is, is a miracle because there was a time where there was negative self, like to the point where I, there was no amount of like things that I could achieve or that I could accomplish or that I could do that could make me see that I was worthy of anything, of anything. I was just, I was as insecure as possible. And I know that a lot of you have been there or are there right now and that kills me. And I just hope that you know that like it's all, it really is all in your head and it really does get better. And I know people tell you that all the time, but like 
I wished for so long. Like I look back and I'm like, God, why couldn't she see it? I'm so dramatic. It's fine. But anyway, um, that just means a lot to me. It means so much to me, especially knowing that like, you know, where I was just a few years ago. And I hope that if anybody out there feels like they're shit and feels like they aren't worthy of anything, like they're, it's just not you. Um, what are you doing? This is the same damn island we were just on. There's like tears in my mouth and I get to get mad at you. Thank you. I would, I would love to give you a hug right now, Boots. You're the exact comic relief I needed. I'm so damn dramatic. <laughs> no, I just, I don't know. I just hate to even think that anybody could be where I was at one point where you could just hate yourself. I hate the, the concept of people hating themselves, even though I know it well. I just hope that everyone who hates themselves finds what I found. And it's so, again, generic, and I don't want you to think that I'm just being cliche. Like, I'm literally living proof, and I don't want to trigger anyone again, so I'm not going to go into details. And when I do go into details, there will be plenty of trigger warnings because I know how important they are. I used to need them. And I still do on a lot of things. But I just want everybody to be okay. And if you're not okay right now, I hope that you will reach out to me or to anybody in the comments and just help, help us to help you be okay. Or to at least help you to, to know that you will be okay, that you can be okay someday. Even if it doesn't seem like it, there was times in my life where I really did not think I was gonna ever be okay. I was like, how could I ever be okay with this brain that I have? There's just no way. I'm happy, I'm really, I really am happy. Not everything's perfect in my life, not, not even close, but I am happy right now. Oh my God, I love him. Oh my God, bam, hi bam. What a cutie, just the face I needed to see. I'm wiping my tears, bam. See, it gets better, here's bam. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> I love bam, I love everybody. I'm so, so dramatic, but it's fine. This is my thing. What's his, what is his initial phrase? I don't wanna talk to him again. I'm afraid I might accidentally invite him. He's so cute though, right? His brown eyes are kind of reddish he's so damn cute his freckles where the hell's Anka I'm crying in the club I'm really actually crying in the club <laughs> right now <laughs> y'all I'm so dramatic anyway um <gasps> oh my god I, could, I just randomly saw this it, it's yo boy asked me do you listen to I'm hoping that means my chemical romance MCR if so what are your top three favorite songs hello uh yes I listen to MCR I definitely saw them on the Black Parade tour and it is one of the highlights of my life um so yeah I, it's safe to say that I listen to My Chemical Romance uh quite a bit god it's so hard to pick a favorite song a favorite song by My Chemical Romance so this is gonna sound really generic but one of my favorite 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 songs that every single damn time I hear it I get so fucking pumped up like I have to go into the Every time I get into that, like the feeling of that song, every time, famous last words. That's gotta be my favorite song. It's just every time I grit my teeth, I'm like, no, I know that I can't make you stay. <laughs> every time, I could be in a coma. If I'm in a coma, play that song, I promise I'll wake up. I, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Like if I'm literally in a coma and you play famous last words and I don't wake up and sing that shit, Pull the plug, okay? <laughs> Pull the plug. That's that's my that's my fucking famous last words right there, <laughs> cause that's my song. But obviously, I also love you know like Ghost of You. I don't love you, Mama. Welcome to the Black Parade. Ever heard of it? I'm not okay. Hello, come on. Just every song by the they're so fucking iconic. They are the emo band of the century. Okay, I don't care what anybody says. They're just so good. And I was gonna see them this year. <laughs> But then we got a pandemic instead. I'm so pissed, I can't even tell you. Yeah, I like My Chemical Romance, to say the least. To say Helena, every goddamn song, Cancer, fucking Teenagers, Dead, The Kids From Yesterday, Vampires Will Never Hurt You, every goddamn song, I don't care. I don't care. Anyway, yeah, I like My Chemical Romance. Thank you for asking. I'm glad you noticed. Oh my God, Lucas P. Are you jealous that I found Kyle with 10 tickets? Fucking yeah. Hell yeah, I am. <laughs> Fuck you, Lucas P. I'm kidding. No, I'm so jealous. You're a you're a god. You're a god, Lucas P. You're a fucking legend. 
<laughs> oh my God, 10 tickets and you found Kyle. You're a God. I don't know what else to tell you. Oh my God, I love this. Bethany, my girl, if you could make one new personality type, what would it be? Male or female or both? It doesn't matter. How about sad boy? How about emo? Could we make an emo boy a sad boy? Are you kidding me? Oh, hair. Go back to paradise, have your cheeseburger, and why don't you choke on it for me? Could ya? Would ya? <laughs> Anyway, I think honestly, we need an emo boy. We need like an emo, like they're an emo villager or like a, a sad boy or something, right? Like they're just sitting alone and they're like, have you ever thought about like how we could die at any second and how like this could be the last day that we ever see? Like really fucking unnecessarily dramatic and emo. Wouldn't that be awesome? God, we gotta get off the emo thing. I like how it's midnight in my life, in my world and I have to work in the morning, but it's 3 p.m. in Animal Crossing. It's 3 p.m. somewhere. <laughs> O'Hare would like that. Can we just find, why does this always have to be a spectacle? Why can't I be the one that finds Anka on the first island? It's not fair. I don't understand. I haven't even found Raymond yet. I've been on so many villager hunts and I've never seen Raymond. It's a conspiracy. The government. Come on, you and your emo baby again and no Anka. I can't believe it. This is really going to be another Kyle thing. Are you kidding me? Isn't that weird? Some people just get it right away. Others have to search their whole life. Interesting. Are we talking about Hopkins again? Is that Hop that little fucking No, it's not Hopkins. It's the other one. No, it is. Is that Hopkins? Don't tell me that that's Hopkins because I'll kill him with an axe. Is it Hopkins? That's Hop. Just turn around. Let me see the plug. Yep. Hopkins. I'll kill him with an axe if he's not careful. Yikes. Why could I get Hopkins two times almost in a row, but not Anka? Interesting. Wilbur, get me the hell out of here. And why don't you try to find Anka? She's hard to miss. Come on. Who the hell? What is his name? A Dizzy? Something weird? No, Dizzy's the elephant. Puck. Puck. Out here wearing a helmet and a hockey jersey. Where's the hockey game, Puck? You got a hockey game today? Where the hell's the rink? Where are you going to play? Where's your team? Puck's a joke. Yep. Puck's a joke. Y'all, I'm gonna go away for murder. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you didn't see who this is, but I did. And I need a weapon. I need a knife. I didn't ever pin myself as the type to, to be able to even commit murder, but I think I might. I think I might kill him. I <laughs> should I kill him? And if so, how should I hide the body? Should I cut him up? Should I throw him into the sea? But do you think he might he might wash ashore, you know? And then you got a body. Should I get some acid to dissolve his body? Should I push him in the lake and let the fish eat him? Wart Jr.? He wants to kill me too. Look at him. He sucks. <laughs> I've gotten raw. I've gotten real. And this is what I get in return. Wart Jr. He's <laughs> the last thing on earth that I need. Why do I deserve this? I'm a good person. I work hard. I do my best every day. And I get Ward Jr. two times on a villager hunt instead of Anka? Come on. Come on. Can you cut me some slack, Wilbur? Please? This sucks. We're back for more. We still have not found our girl yet. In fact, I have quite a bit to show you. Today, oh my God, so scary. He was there. Look, he was fucking hiding. He's been out of control. No, I have a, a, a few things to show you. I'm just, I, I, I'm not going to take very long. I have to get some tickets anyway. But today, I had a bunch of my amazing, lovely patrons come over and visit. And we have quite the little offering for our girl. I think it's a, I think it's subtle. You know, I think it's subtle enough that it's not gonna like freak her out or, you know, go go overboard with the manifestation thing. You know what I mean? Like uh, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Let's just fuck around and get 100, 80, 90, 100. You wanna fuck around and get 104? Might as well, right? No, watch this. Okay, these people are, look, I can't even, I didn't even ask. Who asked? Not me, but they did it. Anyway, look at the offerings that they brought this girl. Sherb, what is he doing? Look at this. Is this subtle? 
It's subtle enough that she won't really notice that like it, we're targeting her, but I feel like she's going to feel really welcome. <laughs> I just want to make her feel like she's at home, you know? It's subtle, right? But yeah, this is the this is the result of the of my patrons visiting and bringing stuff for Anka. I didn't even ask. Can you imagine having people like this in your life? I, what did I do to deserve this? It was so funny too because today was the day that I chose to have these patrons come and visit me and I forgot that it was Goose's birthday. So Goose, in his in his arrogance and ignorance, thought that the patrons were coming specifically to visit him. He was like, look at all these people who came from far and wide for my birthday. And I was like, Goose, you wish. What was I just gonna do? I think nothing. I think I was just gonna do nothing but get started. We have a be- oh, Sherb. He's really out to get me. I'm scared. It's fine. We're just going to get right back into it. And I kind of wanted it to be like nighttime. I don't know. I just wanted, I don't know, just spooky vibes. You know what I mean? Like, let's see here. Who is it? What's her name again? She's so cute. That's Pecan, right? Poppy or Pecan? Poppy, Pecan. Hello, Poppy. She's cute. Uh, you know what? I got quite a bit of uh, of backlash for saying that Poppy was just like all the other squirrels. And I apologize in my in my like opinion on every villager. I've just I've honestly I've never interacted with her. You know, I didn't know. I had no idea. But she apparently has changed lives. She's been more than an, just another squirrel for so many of you. And I apologize for disrespecting a queen, a true queen Apparently, I, I, I don't have any experience with the girl, but based on the, the feedback from others, it's apparent that she is more than meets the eye. She's more than just a squirrel. Octavian, what did I tell you about showing up on these islands? I told you to please do it as, as frequently as possible because I love you and I love to check in with you. How are you doing? He's still angry after all this time. I don't know if he's ever gonna be a happy person. I'm just kidding. I'm sure some of you have him and are doing your best to make him happy. Peace be with you, Octavian. Anyway, let's go ahead and do some more questions. Honey Oceans, I love this question. Do you have any siblings? I feel like you're too funny to be an only child. That's so funny. I actually am the oldest of four children. So I have three younger brothers and I'm the only girl, which is, I don't know. It's just whatever, you know, but. Uh... Oh my God, scared. She's scared. I'm scared. It's Ribot. Have I ever, ever gotten him before? I don't think I have. Ribot, go back to your creator. You know, I'm going to like fiddle with something in his head and make him like shut down. I'm glad that he didn't zap me. I wonder what he would say, actually. He'd probably like beep, bop, boop. What would he say? Beep, beep, bop. Can you imagine being Ribot and talking to me as if you're a human? Look at how his mouth moves. I actually... <laughs> I just noticed that and it's so scary. How do you guys live with this being? He's not a being. Y'all, I had no idea that that's how his mouth moved. Oh God. This is horrifying. He's even worse than I ever thought. He doesn't have abs. He's a jock. I'm learning so many startling facts about Ribba right now. I'm scared. I had no idea that his mouth moved like that. I, I guess I just didn't know. I don't know what I thought. Ribba, you, you are even scarier than I ever thought. Look at him. He's got like these, oh my God. Can you imagine it being nighttime on your island and Ribba is there and he's just, he's like these, these glowing yellow eyes. How are you people inviting him to your island? I don't get it. He's scary. He's a scary robot, okay? Period. Anyway, I have three younger brothers and they're all so hilarious. I feel like they're the funniest people I've ever met in my life. Oh my God. They're just so funny. Every time I talk to my brothers, I'm like screaming on the phone laughing. They're so funny. But yeah, we're a funny family, I guess. I guess. I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's a genetic. I don't know. But yeah, I have three younger brothers and they're all awesome. And I love them. And it's funny because it's kind of a weird like age gap thing. I have a brother who's two years younger than me. And then my other, my two younger brothers are like a lot younger. I have a brother who is 10 years younger than me. And I have a brother who is 13 years younger than me. Yeah. So that's kind of crazy. Oh my gosh, Aubrey, this is a great question. Aubrey said, what was high school like for you? Based on the way you talk, the way you create scenes in Animal Crossing, how smart you are. Oh my God, thank you. 
Part of me thinks you were either a mean peppy girl who, because she was smart and pretty, thought no one was good enough to be her friend. Ooh. Or your imagination, personality, and knowledge was just too much for some people to handle, so you were basically a loner who was obsessed with books and horses. What the fuck? Are you in my house right now? How the hell did you know that? Did somebody Oh my God, Aubrey, thank you. You're so sweet. And also you pinned me. You pinned me so hard that I, f I felt, that freaked me out. I'm not gonna lie, that last sentence freaked me out so bad. So yeah, that was basically, the, it was the second one, definitely. No, 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 I was not, I feel like I've never been mean. I couldn't, I was, I was the one that the other people were being mean too, because I was weird. But the thing with me in high school was that I really wanted to, I just couldn't find my place and I just kept trying to fit in with everybody and I had like a whole bunch of like I, I would have like best friends but then like they would screw me over and who I thought that was Pierce for a second and I was like wait a second what it's Keaton I like Keaton Keaton's really cool hi Keaton he's like really beautiful <laughs> he's like a beautiful man oh, you know. Is, isn't he? He's, he's got like the softest, kindest face. Keaton. I don't know why, but I just feel like I could like collapse into Keaton's arms and cry about my high school experience. <laughs> like Keaton, they were so mean to me. <laughs> oh my God. Like, I feel like I kind of, I don't know. I did this. Ke I'm talking to Keaton, honestly. <laughs> Keaton, I just feel like I, you know, I, I like drifted apart with some of my friends because like they were smart and really good at school and I stopped being good at school because school was really hard for me and we didn't have the same classes. And so all of my good friends like kind of just drifted away. Whereas like, and then I started like hanging out with the wrong crowd. Keaton was so sweet to me. Thanks for holding me, Keaton. <laughs> it was very platonic that what happened with me and Keaton. I'm all over the place tonight but anyway yeah I, I had high school was really hard for me it was really hard for me I just I really wish I could go back and just let myself be a, like an anime kid or like a theater kid you know what I mean and like just like not care what people thought about me but unfortunately I really 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 did care and I really struggled a lot I was really insecure and oh god it's Mathilda I'm scared I don't need this right now I'm going through a really emotional like thing right now Mathilda stop hurting people I'm gonna just yell at her really quick Mathilda can you stop hurting people she's so terrifying don't smile at me like you're sweet don't tell me my name's lovely she's fake she's fake as hell <laughs> I kind of love that she's being really sweet and then she opens her eyes and she's absolutely horrifying you know what Mathilda no, I was I was gonna say I was wrong about her, but I was right on the money. She's dangerous. She's dangerous. She'll be sweet to your face and then she'll stab you in the back with a real knife too. Who's this? Oh, Penelope again. You know what, Penelope? Love ya. Don't love to see ya on my villager hunt looking for Anka. So could you just maybe stop following me? Thanks. Oh my God, Pappy, no, I don't want to see Pappy because now I want him to come home to me, but I can't because I already have this whole thing set up for Anka and that would really freak him out. Can you imagine he gets there and he's like, what is this? What is all of this? I don't need all this, but Anka does. Oh, Pappy. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Pappy. I'm visiting this island today. I see that. You're Amanda from Molokai? That's real cool. This island's real neat, right? Let's have some fun together while we're here. Oh, he's so cute. Why do I have Sherb and not him? He would never try to serial kill me. I love him. He's so cute. Look at him. He's no copy. <laughs> He's so fucking cute. I can't stand it. Like his little face, his little eyes. He looks like a Disney character. He looks like Mickey Mouse's like better cousin. Oh my God, look at his little curl. His little, oh, I can't stand it. I don't like to see Peppy because I can't have him yet. That hurts. Ooh, Peggy. Is that what her name is? That's Peggy, right? Haven't I already seen Peggy? Peggy, stop talking. She hasn't even, Pansetti. That's what I meant. God, Pansetti. Stop talking, Pansetti. <laughs> okay, okay, I have a headache already. What animals are you afraid of? Great question. Josh Patio. Hopefully I said that right. What animals am I afraid of? Ugh. So I want to say that I'm not afraid of any animals, but that would be, like, it, it depends on the situation. You know, like, there is no animal that I would feel afraid of just by seeing them, if that makes sense. It depends on the situation. Like, I believe in having a healthy respect for animals that can be dangerous. Uh, this is gonna sound 
like really pretentious, but I have like the knowledge, I guess, to help offset a lot of the fears that people who might not exactly know what to expect from animals or know what their nature normally is, that often leads to the fear of certain animals. So for example, I actually used to be extremely arachnophobic like when I was younger and I hated, I couldn't even look at them. It was that bad. I, I hated spiders. But um, during school and through my time working with reptiles, it tended to be like that everywhere I would work, they would also have tarantulas close by. Who's this? What's his name again? What a mess. Who's this? This person is a mess. Who is this? Sandy. Sandy's a little bit of a mess, but actually Sandy is a ostrich. Sandy's an ostrich. Yeah, I always forget about Sandy. I just feel like they look kind of, is Sandy a boy or a girl? I actually don't know. And Sandy is a gender neutral name too. So I'm just gonna refer to them as they, but I feel like the, the hair thing and they look very tired. Sandy, I'm gonna pray for you, okay? Anyway, uh, yeah, look at that twitch that Sandy just did. Sandy's a mess. Somebody get Sandy help. Anyway, yeah, so I like used to be terrified of spiders. And then I went, the more I learned about them, like truly, the more I realized like, oh my God, this fear, a lot of it was just kind of like an identity thing. Like I was like hanging on to it because it was a part of my identity. I was like, oh yeah, I'm afraid of spiders. It's just one fact about me. But then I realized it's like, you know, what am I actually afraid of? Like these animals are actually super important. I think that was the first thing. It was like, I, I acknowledged that spiders were important. They're so important to their ecosystems. They play such important roles. They're such important predators and food sources. And with Without spiders, the world really would be different. They play a huge role. By the way, for the sake of just this concept of being afraid of both insects and arachnids, I'm just gonna group them together when I talk about that fear of me getting over my fear of spiders. Because generally when people are thinking of that fear, that's what they're thinking of is, is bugs in general. But I, of course, am aware that arachnids are not insects. Uh, they're their own thing. They're such a beautiful, fascinating group of animals that are not technically insects. But again, generally, people tend to group them together. Arthropods, if you will. So anyway, yeah, I just wanted to put that in there so that you guys know that I'm not a hack. <laughs> One of my favorite quotes, actually, that really puts it into perspective um, about how, like, just how important insects, for example, insects and bugs and, and, and everything, the thing that people are most commonly afraid of. Uh, one of my favorite quotes by E.O. Wilson, he's a naturalist and a biologist, and the quote goes, if all mankind were to disappear, the world would regenerate back to the rich state of equilibrium that existed 10,000 years ago. If insects were to vanish, the environment would collapse into chaos. <laughs> so it's like, if anything, humans, not only do we not play an important role in any ecosystem, but we actually are, are making the world a, a worse place. And that's the truth. And I try not to be like pessimistic. I try to like, I, I, I have hope for, for mankind. I hope that we can, that we can learn how to make the world a better place, but insects are important. And that was my first, I had to accept that. You know what I mean? Oh my God, every damn time. It wouldn't be a villager hunt without seeing Naomi. God, what a... What a weird woman. Like, what is her deal? She's just such a weird woman. I think this is the animal that I'm afraid of. I mean, she's a sweetheart, but she's so damn weird. Anyway, God. So yeah, that was kind of, I had to accept, like, and I, I learned more about bugs and it was a very slow transition. Like I wasn't all of a sudden like holding tarantulas and spiders and letting them crawl on me. It was very slow, but eventually I was able to hold them and then have them as pets. But then of course, like I was definitely scared when there was a bullet ant on my head. <laughs> you know, it depends on the situation. So I guess bottom line, when it comes to being scared of animals. Uh, I think anybody who is in this for the right reasons will tell you that they do have a healthy respect <laughs> that can also be seen as fear when it comes to working with some types of animals. But at the same time, if you know what you're doing, you are generally going to be in control of those encounters because animals, uh, even when they're unpredictable, you know the extent of their behavior. And when you work with a dangerous animal, you always prepare for the extent of it for as unpredictable and as crazy as those animals can go. For example, if you're working with a gaboon viper, which if you don't know what that is, they are the heaviest venomous snake in the world. They're like a big sausage. And generally gaboon vipers, in my experience, are pretty placid. They don't like to do a lot of moving because they're just very heavy bodied. In fact, I've literally met people before who have been in Africa who have stepped on a gaboon viper by accident because they're so well camouflaged and the gaboon viper just looks at them and is just like, don't let it happen again. And then they keep walking. However, 
Gaboon vipers also have the longest fangs of any venomous snake in the world, and if they bite you, there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna either die or lose the, the extremity that was bitten. Uh, they are a serious, serious snake to take a bite from. And if you're constantly working with a Gaboon Viper thinking that they're gonna be that big lazy sausage and you are not prepared for when a Gaboon Viper explodes. And if you if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Everybody who works with Gaboon Vipers knows about the explosions and they are one of the scariest things I've ever seen. I have worked with Gaboon Vipers and like I worked with one for like a couple months and I knew this snake as like a total sweetheart, just a breeze to work with, always easy going. To witness this animal explode like a stick of dynamite, once they are set off, they are so lightning quick when they're striking, they can hurl their body, their sausage of a body up into the air to actually propel themselves. They are a terrifying animal when they want to be. But the thing is, like, I still am willing to work with them. So there's a fear there of like, oh my God, this animal is so incredibly dangerous. But then there's the fear that maybe a lot of you are feeling right now where like, I wouldn't even have put myself in that situation to begin with. Like, I'm too scared to even want to like entertain the idea of working with these snakes. So that's like kind of the difference between like a fear of animals and like a healthy respect from someone who works with them and knows how dangerous they can be, but also knows how to work around that danger, if that makes sense. Like to have an attitude of like, I'm not afraid of any animal, nothing scares me. That is the type of attitude that will get you bit that will get you, it'll catch you on that day where you're not on your game, where you're slacking off, where you're feeling pretty confident because you've trained your brain to think there's nothing to be afraid of. And there's a difference between your fear of working with an animal, like straight up getting in the way of how efficiently you can work with that animal. You know, if you're shaking every time you're holding the hook, that's not good either. However, if every time you handle that animal, yeah, you feel confident in your abilities, but you've got in the back of your mind that picture of that necrotic hand with the skin rotting off that you saw of your friend after they got bit. So that's gotta be in the back of your mind. Just like every time you get into a car, you gotta be thinking in the back of your mind that you you have to be watching the road. You can't be distracted. If you are tired, you know, you can't just get into the car and hope that you'll, you won't fall asleep and just think that it's never gonna happen to you. You have to be vigilant, even though we we most people get into a car and drive every single day. Oh my God, Julian, no. Julian, what are you doing out here? You're better than this. This place is a dump. Are you kidding me? What are you doing, you crazy man? He's so quirky. Like he just decided to come to a fucking deserted island. Okay, Julian. Oh my God, I love him. What am I supposed to do? Leave him here to die? I can't be asked to do that. Julian, I'm sorry, baby. I really am. I gotta go. I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta go. Ugh. He's like, I don't care. I really don't. He's like, why are you so pressed? Like, I'm gonna be fine. I came here on my own free will and I'll get out of here on my own free will. I don't even know if I've ever seen him. I, I don't think I have. Yeah, I think that might be the first time I've seen Julian. Wouldn't I remember? Oh, B. Hi, B. That's B. No, Maddie. B. Yes, B. B. She's so cute. Hi, B. Ooh, I love this question. Mystery Otaku Chick. Hi. What are your top 10 favorite marine animals? Y'all, come on. You had to ask. Okay, I have so many faves. Um, obviously, we talked about the basking shark. Definitely one of my favorites. I also love manta rays. Oh, I can't even begin. I could go on and on about manta rays. And you know I can go on and on about anything. Manta rays are amazing. Just a few quick facts about manta rays. You know I have to do it for you. So manta rays are different than stingrays. They really are. Manta rays are the big ones. I think a lot of people do uh, tend to think that like kind of all rays are manta rays, but there's only two species of manta rays and they're both gigantic. They're both huge. And they are the ones that have the cephalic lobes, <laughs> those weird kind of like horn type thingies uh, on the tops of their head. And some people do refer to them as devil rays, but there actually is a species of devil ray that is a smaller type of ray. <sighs> this is, I'm such a nerd. Basically, manta rays are the big ones. They're the big ones with the big fat loppy lobes on the front of their head. And then there are smaller rays with those lobes, but those are mobula rays, and one of them is called the devil ray. 
But there are only two species of manta rays. There's the reef manta and the giant oceanic manta. And mantas are the largest species of ray. Mantas are incredible animals. Oh my God. They are the smartest fish on earth. They have the biggest brain to body ratio of any fish. Their brain is massive. There are so many instances of manta rays remembering divers that have helped them uh, to get uh, hooks out of their out of their face or to get untangled. And these mantas will come up and greet these divers and follow them around and, and they, they have happy play behaviors and they are incredible animals. They really, really truly are. They're filter feeders. They have no stinger, no stinging barb whatsoever. However, manta rays are 100% harmless in every way. They're harmless, okay? That's another thing that I think a lot of people get wrong about them. They're harmless. They have no stinger, period. Oh my gosh, another fabulous horse, Colton. Hi, Colton. Bye, Colton. Anyway, manta rays are harmless. Can't stress that enough. They're filter feeders. They eat plankton and the uh, cephalic lobes on top of their head are actually, they roll them out and they use those to help scoop uh, plankton and like other small uh, or microorganisms into their mouth. And then they uh, filter them through. They've got all of these, their little like combs that line their gills called gill rakers that catch the plankton and help them to eat. Oh my gosh, Olivia, what are you doing? Hello, gorgeous, perfect angel. She's so pretty. Oh my God, kitty, my bully. But apparently, I don't know, she's nice to you people. I don't know, she's always laughing at me and stuff and making me feel like bad about myself. Kind of. I don't know. She's bullying me. Well, there's a fresh face. What is that supposed to mean? My face is fresh. What? She's laughing at me. Yeah, look at her. Oh my God, she's so petty. Kitty, I'm out of here. So yeah, I love manta rays. I love leatherback sea turtles. I love basking. I love all sharks. I just love sharks. Oh, Twiggy. Hi, Twiggy. Uh, I love all sharks. I love octopuses and other cephalopods like cuttlefish and nautilus. I love <laughs> nautilus in the ocean. <laughs> I love whales. Oh, I love whales so much. I love ocean sunfish or mola molas. I love them. Oh, and I, you guys probably know what ocean sunfish are because of Animal Crossing. I love it. Oh my God, and coelacanths. Oh, another animal that you guys know about because of Animal Crossing. Thank you, Animal Crossing. Love coelacanths. I just love animals so much. Animals are the best, right? I love parrotfish. I love triggerfish. I love... <laughs> I could just keep on going forever. Like it never ends. There's so many amazing animals that live in the ocean. What am I supposed to do? I love gulper eels. Oh my God, deep sea fish, so fun. Hagfish, you said something about the hagfish too. Love, I love hagfish. You, you know I love the hagfish. Oh my God, hagfish are amazing. They're so slimy. Once you get me started, I can't stop. Okay, sorry. Ooh, this is a good one. Actually, wow, baby G, asking the good stuff. Do you like true crime, girl? Don't even get me started. Do I like true crime? So I don't like that true crime happens. Benedict, I don't wanna see you again. I told you to stay away from me. Look at Benedict, this is what he's become. After he leaves my island, he, he's a hobo. It's fine. I'll be praying for you, Benedict. Anyway, I'm really into true crime. Really, really into true crime. Like I don't like that true crime happens. I hate it. <laughs> it's awful, but I can't like stop. That's like, I think that that's probably the like the most common thing that I watch on YouTube is true crime and it haunts me like it keeps me up at night that's why I think I'm gonna get stabbed all the time are you kidding me and it just like ah oh, just sticks with me so hard but I just can't I don't know I'm just like wow people really do this stuff are you kidding me stop <laughs> stop killing people what is is it that hard to just not kill people god like why, not even laugh like it's so stupid stop killing people please oh my god can you believe her did you see her? I have to kind of collect myself. Do I look cool enough before I go over there? Can you believe her? Audie, what are you doing? Don't you have anything better to do than to come here during my Anka hunt? Look at how gorgeous she is. I can't even, I can't even handle her. I don't know what to do with her. She's gorgeous. And you know what? Like out of everyone who wants to be a pop star, like she's the one who's got it all. She's got what it takes. I really do believe that. Look at her. I feel like... She is better than, she's definitely, I don't just feel like she's better than me. She is, look at that. Oh, she just gave me that look. I don't think she meant to. Oh, Adi, there are so many people that 
want you. Why do you have to come to me? Oh my God, it's Amelia again. Amelia, don't you have some man to like make cry at a casino when you beat him in poker and take him for everything he's worth? Come on, Amelia, because she loves to play poker. Amelia, go kick Dan Belzerian's ass in poker and make him cry. Make me proud, please. Oh my God, who's this again? What's her name? I always want to call every single kangaroo Sylvia. What's her name? Carrie, right? This is Carrie. Freaking Carrie. Oh, where's Anka? Come on. Who is this? Freaking the other one, that weird lady. Who is this? What's her name? Pippi? Something like that? Something weird? Pippi, what is up with you, girl? Look at her dead eyes. I'm kidding. Pippi seems sweet. She seems like a sweet girl. Oh my God, Grizzly. Where the hell is Anka? If this is Hippo, I'm killing him. He's getting in, he's getting put in, pushed into a fire. Oh, it's Cube. Hi, Cube. I love Cube. Bye, Cube. Who that? What's his name again? Freaking Olaf. Olaf, right? Wearing pants. Oh, oh what? <laughs> Apollo, you're the person I need to see right now. I have half a mind to just invite Apollo. Wow, it's a full moon tonight. Wow. It's a full moon. Where the hell's Anka? Hi, Apollo. I'm all over the place. I just, you know, just basking in his beauty right now. He's just so handsome. Apollo, what are you doing here? <laughs> I love you. Why were you so weird in the Animal Crossing movie? Actually, you know what? You were in the right. You know what? Everybody, it was everybody else that was weird. Let's just, I'm going to look out on that. Wow, what a, what a picture. Should I just? Wonderful. I thought it was um, Drift for a second, but I think it's one of the scary mustache frogs. Friggin', ugh, the devil one. The scary one. Yep, what's his name again? Jacques? No, that's not. Oh my God, so scary. Hey, I'm Croak. Croak is scaring me. Croak, stop yelling at me. Ooh, is this Scorpion Island? What the hell? What the hell? Wait, there was one scorpion on there. Wait, is this Scorpion Island? What the hell? What is this island? What is this island? What is this island? I've never seen this type of island before. And I feel like as soon as I go over there, I'm gonna get nailed by that scorpion. What the hell? I'm totally gonna get nailed. I'm gonna get nailed. Oh my God. Yo, I'm gonna get nailed by this motherfucker. Ugh. Did you guys just see that? This is cursed. What the hell? Did you guys just see that scorpion disappear? Are you kidding me? What the hell? What? What is this island? This scorpion, the scorpion disappeared. I didn't even get a chance. Oh my God. Oh, it's gold. Oh, oh, it's a gold island. Oh, hell yeah. What the hell? This is like the best moment. Of oh my God, a gold island. Whoa, it's over for you peasants. I'm out of here. <laughs> oh my God. Never mind. Whoa, I've never had this island before. Hell yeah, I gotta be close. I gotta be on the trail for Anka. Come on. Anka, I'm surprised a croak is on this island. A peasant like croak and not Anka on Gold Island. Are you kidding me? A peasant like croak. Interesting. Croak, get out of my way. I'm rich. I don't need you anymore. Oh my God, this is, oh my God. Yo, this is crazy, what the hell? This is, oh my God, right? I'm sorry to be freaking, I've never ever seen an island like this and I've been on a lot of islands. This is a scorpion ass island and it's also a gold island. Like, oh my God, dude, I'm gonna be so rich. I'm not even gonna need these peasants anymore. <laughs> Cause I've been to Spider Island before. I've never been to like the scorpion equivalent of Tarantula Island. I've never ever seen an island like this. I gotta be careful too, cause like there's scorpions everywhere. Damn. Yo, what was I thinking? I can't even see the scorpions. I'm gonna get nailed. I'm gonna get nailed. Yeah, I can't see the scorpions coming. That's always who I was in Mortal Kombat. Scorpion! Oh, here's a scorpion. I love scorpion. He's kind of a bad guy though, you know, but I like him. You know, I like a bad boy. Yo, what the hell? So many scorpions on this island. Scorpions and gold. This is some Anka shit. The scorpion king, hello, that's, Anka related, right? Scorpion is actually a really beautiful word. <laughs> I've said it so many times that it's kind of like changed. And I'm thinking now, I'm like, wow, scorpion. That's a cool word. I want to get like a black dog and name it scorpion. Scorpion. Scorp. Where did that scorpion go? It went into the sea and disappeared? If off, if straight into the sea. It yeeted itself into the sea. Nice. Interesting. Wow, I can't believe this island, right? Oh, see, I told you I was going to get nailed. <laughs> I knew it. These scorpions are not here to play. <laughs> Eight gold nuggets. She's out of here. I don't need any of these peasants anymore. <laughs> Wilbur, I can get my own damn private jet. 
and fly around and find my own villagers. I don't need Wilbur anymore. Ooh, uh, I love it. Clint Nefaho. I'm sorry if I'm not saying your names right. I hope that I am, but Clint. Let's just say Clint. What is your favorite scary movie? I love scary movies. I think horror movies, I might have already said this before, but horror movies are probably one of my favorite genres of movies. I'm one of those people who kind of likes being afraid. I like going to haunted houses. I like being afraid, unless it's like a real scary situation, like a serial killer attacking me with a knife, which has never happened, but I don't want it to. But like, if, if I know I paid, I just paid like to go into this haunted house and nobody's actually allowed to kill me in here, that's cool. Cause it's just gonna be all fun and games. It's not, Boyd is the other one. Wow, his he is really thick. <laughs> Look at that butt. I'm so jealous. Louis, Louis, Louis. He looks just like Donkey Kong, but you're not Donkey Kong. You'll never be Donkey Kong. My favorite scary movie is also one of I it's arguably my favorite film of all time. I just love it. And it is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974 by Toby Hooper, of course, the original. I just love it. I think it's perfect. I think it's great. I think it's perfect. It's not like, I don't know. It's uh, kind of, it's kind of misunderstood, you know? Cause a lot of people are like, what are you sick? Are you sick in your head that you love that you love seeing people being massacred with a chainsaw? Is that what you're saying? But it's, it's more than that. It's really, <laughs> It's actually a pretty, it's a it's a good film, and it, I don't want to sound like a pretentious shithead right now, but there's a lot of really rich thematic elements. <laughs> Nan, where is Chevre? No, it's okay. I trust her. I do. I trust her. That's the first time. You know what, Nan? Sometimes you just need to get away, you know, get away from the wife, right? How's Chevre doing, Nan? Tell her I said hi, give her my best. And you know what? Tell her to shoot me a text sometime or at least a letter. Come on. Tell her not to be a stranger. Um, Yeah, like, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is like one of the original slasher films. And I love a good slasher, especially from the 70s and 80s. And I think that Leatherface is a pretty misunderstood character because he's kind of like a proxy. He's like a scapegoat for the even worse members of his family. I could talk on and on about that movie. Come on, Anka. Nope, it's snooty. She'll kill me if she sees me. Don't let her see me. She'll slap me right across the face. I think she just isn't in the mood to see me and I'm not in the mood to see her. I mean, I guess since we're talking about movies now. <laughs> Um, I love, there's a lot of really great modern day. I would say that we are currently in the midst of a horror renaissance, honestly, if you're into horror. There's just so many good recent horror movies that have come out. I love anything by Ari Aster. I love Hereditary. I love Midsummer. Definitely two of my favorite films like of all time. Love them. And I love anything by Robert Eggers. Basically, A24 is killing it right now. <laughs> if we want to talk movies, I love The Witch. I love The Lighthouse. Yeah, I just, I could, I could I'm stopping myself. I could go on and on and on and on. But I uh, love a good horror movie. If you ever need a recommendation for a good horror movie to watch during spooky season, you know who to come to. Oh my God, my enemy, I'll kill him. Listen, Claus, can you fuck off? <laughs> Look at that face. I just can't handle him. Can you? Why does this villager exist? They're so weird. <laughs> who, what's her name again? Uh, Elise, she's cute. She's an old lady. Oh my God, kid. I love kids so much. Hi, kid. I love him. He's one of my faves. I wish I could go see him, but I'm, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get this done. You know, Yuka. Hi, sweetie. Oh my God. It's Gonzo. He's so cute. Gonzo and Yuka shipping it so hard. Salil again. Salil, come on. Where's Anka? Where the hell is Anka? Kid, come on. I just saw you. Kid, as much as I love you, leave me alone. I'm taken by Kyle. Okay. He's so cute though. He really is. Aw, and his, his initial phrase is what? <laughs> He's so cute. He's like a scene kid. Oh my God, Francine, what are you doing out here? And where is your sister? She's all over the place. What a mess. She's gorgeous though, right? <laughs> God. Ooh, this is a great question. Piccolo, Maine. Oh, and your pi picture is Piccolo. I love Piccolo. What's your favorite album of all time? Very hard question for me to answer. I think there's going to be several. First off the top of my head is Lateralis by Tool. I just, everything about that album is so good. And it was such a big part of me and the beginning of me and Matt's relationship because we really bonded over just like talking about that album. It's just a really cool, very well made album. But I also really love freaking Fine Line by Harry Styles. Hello. <laughs> See, I could just go from that to that. And I love The Black Halo by uh, Camelot, which is Camelot is a like power metal 
uh, band. And it's like an amazing concept album that is just so over the top and dramatic. And I love it so much. What's her name again? Felicity. Oh, and then there's Buckethead. And I basically love every single album by Buckethead. I mean, it's Crime Slunk Scene, Coma, Electric Tears. Uh, it's so hard for me to pick. See, I just can't do it. Oh my God, Rush, hello, Hemispheres, ugh. Are you kidding me? So I can get Judy twice and Anka's nowhere to be found. I'm so sorry to anyone looking for Judy. Twice? This isn't fair. This isn't doesn't even make sense. Judy, what are you doing out here? You gorgeous friggin' angel. Did it hurt when you fell from heaven, Judy? Did it? <laughs> oh my God, look at her, she's gorgeous. What is wrong with me? I'm just gonna leave her here? Yep, I guess I am, even though she looks like friggin' cotton candy and she has galaxy eyes. I'm gonna leave her here. What's wrong with me? Come on, really, Ursula? I'll kill her. I'll go over there and we'll fight. Ursula, leave me alone. I told you already that I don't like you. <laughs> I don't know what else she wants me to say. Oh my God, who's this? Oh my God, he's gonna kill me. Look at this guy, come on, he's so scary, right? Doesn't he look just like the guy from, from Outlast? Ugh, he's so scary. He looks just like the guy from Outlast with the big scissors that chases you down and tries to cut you up. And I don't wanna be cut up. It's, what's her name again? Kit, right? Where's the villager? Cause there's a fire, ugh. Phoebe, what the hell is up? Girl, what is up? I don't think we've met. You know what, Phoebe? Isn't this devastating when you've had someone for so long and then they just do you like this and they forget you even existed? Phoebe, I made you, <laughs> okay? What? <laughs> Judy, what are you doing? I'm so sorry to anyone who loves Judy and is looking for her. I literally just got Judy like three times in a damn row. What the hell? And I can't find Anka? Come on. Ooh, hand crusher. Do you like any anime? If so, what would be your top recommendations? Hell yeah, I like anime. Are you kidding me? Oh, where do I even start? Where do I even start? It's hard because like, when I when you say recommendations, I'm like, okay, well, have you watched anime before? Are you looking for just like deep cuts? Are you looking for like starter animes? Like Leonardo, he's handsome. Yeah, he's a leopard, cutie. Like my favorite animes are very nostalgic to me and they're not necessarily animes like I would recommend people go right into just because there's so much. There's a lot of filler. I feel like it might not capture your attention as easily for like a beginner of anime. For example, Naruto. I obviously love Naruto so freaking much, but I would hate to have somebody watch that as like their first anime and like it kind of loses you with like a lot of the filler episodes or, you know, I feel like it would get, it would hook you with the first couple, I don't know. You know, there's a lot, I think the first couple seasons, a lot of the first episodes definitely get you, but you know what I mean? And then like Dragon Ball Z, like I love Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, but at the same time, like, I don't know if I want somebody to start out with Dragon Ball cause it can drag, no pun intended. And then Dragon Ball Z like gets right into it and you already like, you're like, who the hell is this Goku guy? But like, if you don't watch Dragon Ball and like the Piccolo stuff, you know, it just gets it so convoluted then there was so much it's like at this point if you didn't get on the train way back when maybe you missed it unless you really want to i don't know you know that's why it's nice to have the abridged stuff and to have just i don't know you know i recommend everybody watch death note because it's death note is digestible it there's a lot to digest <laughs> there's a lot it's amazing oh it's such a good story such good characters just a good damn anime <laughs> i love death note and it's enough that it's not gonna it doesn't take you friggin six years to watch it all doby uh, wasn't i just talking about doby hi doby you're so damn cute i'm gonna be thinking of you doby on my journey but i gotta go so yeah death note is great uh matt had never watched any anime in his life so we got him started on death note and he absolutely loved it and it was just so awesome to see him enjoying his first anime and being like this is amazing this is anime this is is what I've been missing out on my whole life. He loved it. Then I had him watch Sword Art Online and he wasn't as into it. Like he liked it a lot, but he wasn't like as into it as Death Note. But I love Sword Art, obviously. But it, you know, it kind of goes off the rails there a little bit, right? <laughs> Have you seen it? You know, at some points you're like, whoa, whoo, wow, this started off so strong. And it's not like, I, I mean, I loved it because I loved melodrama you know me i love all that cheesy shit but it, at the same time you sign up for one thing and you might and sometimes you get something else you know you know what I, same with tokyo ghoul that's the thing with so many freaking animes is that they start out so freaking strong and then what the hell happens like tokyo ghoul is maybe one of my biggest disappointments of my life because the first season of tokyo ghoul is one of the best first seasons of anything that i've ever seen in my life when i tell you that like I 
was so in that. Whoa, hi, hello. What's his name again? He's mad. I don't like when people are mad. Ricky. Ricky's gonna punch me if I'm not careful. Ricky's so mad. <laughs> Obviously, uh, um, I don't know. Ever heard of uh, My Hero Academia? Amazing. I couldn't recommend it more. Haiku, hello. Ever heard of it? Couldn't recommend it more. How about Attack on Titan? <laughs> so many good ones that are like, they're basic, quote unquote. They're like the popular ones, but they're popular for a reason, okay? And if somebody's new to anime, and they haven't watched those yet, or if you're not new to anime and you haven't watched them yet, obviously you gotta watch them. You gotta watch them. What else is there? Uh, Bleach, hello, so good. Um, oh my God, I'm gonna cry. I'm sorry, it just came to me and I just remembered it. And you know what? It's making me upset because of sucker. And I think this is where a lot of the sucker stuff comes from. It's some assassination classroom. Assassination classroom. If you know, you know. I think that's where a lot of my projections of Zucker come from because I'm very attached to Koro Sensei. <laughs> is this Keaton? Because I need to cry at Keaton. This is perfect. It's Apollo again. <laughs> is this my life? What is happening here to me? Okay, I've gotten Judy three times in the span of like an hour. Apollo twice. <laughs> Apollo. I can't believe you. I've gotten Zucker. What the hell? Apollo, I love you so much. And I really honestly low key want to invite you to my island, but I only have Anka's plot available right now. Like I literally, my hands are tied. But anyway, yeah, I'm like super attached to Koro Sensei, <laughs> like everyone else. And I think I project a lot of that onto Zucker without any of the like, oh, we had no choice, you know? You know how it goes with Goro Sensei, if you've seen it. But if you haven't, oh my God, I cannot recommend Assassination Classroom more. I really can't. It's kind of, I don't know, I feel like not as many people as I wish talked about it are talking about it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's, it's one that like a lot of people have seen, but then... There are a lot of people that I'm surprised that have not seen it yet. Cause it's a, it's a little bit of a crazy premise, but I love it so much. It's so good. God. As for movies, all of you have seen your name, right? You guys have seen your name, right? So good. Oh my God. And me and Matt just watched um, A Whisker Away. The cat one. A Whisker Away. Have you seen it? A Whisker Away. I can't believe it. It was my dream come true. Everything about it was perfect. Oh, I loved it. A Whisker Away. If you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. Oh my God. I loved every minute of that damn movie. Come on. Uh, Vespa. What's her name? Vesta. Vesta. What are you doing? Get out of here. As much as I love you, is that Lolly, my girl? Lolly, I love her. Why is this happening to me? Everybody but Anka again, just like the Kyle thing. I'm trying my best. Maybe I'm. Maybe I need to manifest her more. Lolly, I love you. Hello, Lolly. Be safe out here. Be careful. I wish I brought her like a tent or like a blanket or something. I, she's gonna sit here by, what is she gonna lay down in the grass by the fire? I'm very concerned about Lolly. Where are you gonna sleep, Lolly? Where are you gonna sleep? This is my first time ever wondering where these people sleep because it's night. Night is falling and you know what, Lolly? I'm scared for you. I'm nervous for Lolly. She's looking at me like she's gonna be okay, but I don't know. I wish I could leave her. I don't have a tent. I don't have, I wish I could just leave her some kind of a blanket. I don't have anything for Lolly. Lolly, be careful out here. Okay, and you know what? Here's my number. Here's my number. Call me if you need anything. I swear to God, I'll come get you at any point. I don't care what time it is. I don't care if it's three o'clock in the morning. I will come get you if you need me to. Oh my God, Wilbur, can you? I'm like slipping Wilbur like one of these gold things to come check on her tonight. Maybe bring her like a like a tent or something. Oh my God, it's Bo. Just what I needed to see. I love Bo so much. And I honestly want to invite him to my island, but I can't. Oh my gosh, who's this? Uh, what's his name again? Carlos. Carlos is, I don't know. And I feel like we wouldn't get along. <laughs> What's his name again? Uh, Tibble, yes. Hi, Tibble, bye, Tibble. <gasps> Come on, I'm going into the ocean. I'm going into the ocean, I'm out of here. I'm out of here, why is this happening to me? I really, really want Eric really bad. I don't know if I can just leave him here, but I have to because I have everything already set up for Anka and it would be really weird to have Eric's ass move into Anka's little thing with all the stuff outside. I hate this. Come on, it's Eric. Why? Eric, 
screw you. You're so damn cute. Why is Eric here <laughs> and not Anka? He's so cute. Wait, this makes me want Eric. <laughs> no, I can't. I have to have Anka, but I love... Now I want Eric. Now I want Eric. Look at Eric. He's so cute. Eric, come on. Now, I can't talk to him again. I might accidentally in invite him. He's so damn cute. Can we talk about how cute Eric is? Look at Eric. Eric, you're so damn cute. <laughs> I, I gotta leave. I gotta leave. He's so cute. I love him so much. And I really, really actually, this has renewed my interest in Eric. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I love him. Like, why? What am I doing having Sherb the serial killer on my island when I could have people like Bo and Eric? I literally just pulled up on Bo and Eric. The two boys that you know I wa I've always wanted since the Kyle days. Ugh, I hate my life. God, I already saw him. It's Rocco. Can you not crunch me for once? God, always trying to crunch me. I did nothing to him. And he's trying to crunch me at any point. <laughs> I don't want to be crunched, personally. I don't know about you, but I really don't want to be crunched. So I'm out of here. Pango, get help. No, Pango's gorgeous. Good for you, Pango. <sighs> It's Flurry. Flurry, can you just stop being a Death Eater maybe and grow a nose? I'm just kidding. Ian Lyo, hopefully I'm saying that right. What is it like being a YouTuber? Do you get lots of hate? I feel like I'm just not like as much of, I'm not like an official YouTuber yet. Cause I, I don't know. I don't know if it's that I am irrelevant still, kind of. I don't even have, I'm not even like that relevant. And yet I, you know, I have a good, I would say it's definitely been great. The growth has been phenomenal. You guys have changed my life in like three months. And this is every, I've always wanted, I love this. So first and foremost, thank you. I love this so much, but maybe it's the commute. Oh, Sky, I love you. Be safe out here. See, I'm starting to worry about these girls. It's nighttime, it's a full moon, and I'm worried about my girls. Can you just be careful out here, please? Wilbur, bring her some provisions, please. Can you bring these girls some provisions? They're out here trying to rough it with nothing. They're gonna curl up on the cold, hard ground and sleep outside. Is that what you're telling me? These girls are badass. <laughs> They're harder than I'll ever be. God, what are they doing? Amazing. Anyway, to answer your question, I'm a very sensitive person. I thought I was going to get roasted alive because th that's what everybody always says is like, oh, YouTube is like just full. It's such a toxic place. It's full of all these people who just want to be mean. But you guys are so nice. What the hell? My dad, he doesn't even know how YouTube works. But he, he's always like, ah, uh, yeah, all the stuff that people write under your video. Everybody's so nice to you. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> my dad likes reading the comments because it gives him joy. Okay. Let's just put it that way. That's so sweet. I always, I don't know. Everybody's always like, oh yeah, YouTube is such a toxic place. You get so much haters. I just, I don't even know. I'm very sensitive. So I was terrified. I was like, I'm just gonna not read the comments. I hope I don't let it get to me. Everybody's been so nice. I'll get like the occasional mean comment, but they don't even bother me because it's just like, because you guys are so nice about it. It's helped me in so many ways. I'm gonna get emotional. I think I already did that, didn't I? Didn't I cry and tell you how much you meant to me? Yeah, I'll do it again, <laughs> though. Don't tempt me. Keaton, just the person I needed. I need to go cry to Keaton. Cause look at Keaton. Doesn't he have, I almost am like just low key want Keaton. Cause he's got this face that kind of cures me. Doesn't he kind of cure you? Look at his face. It's so kind. It's so soft. Keaton is holding me right now. Something there that wasn't there before with Keaton, really. Keaton is really so beautiful. He's a beautiful man and his hugs are so warm. Keaton is the warmest individual. He's got a warm face. That's the perfect word to describe Keaton. He's got a very warm, loving presence. He really does. And I think it's a perfect presence to end our night on. Thank you for another great sesh. Like I, I honestly feel like when I'm talking to you in a villager hunt that I'm like, Ugh. Please don't hurt my friends anymore, Sherb. Come on. I don't know. It's not like I'm just talking into the void. Like I always know that you guys are going to comment back and you're always going to get exactly what I was going for and all these rambling rants. You guys at this point know that I could get all cheesy, but I won't because we've had a long night, haven't we? We'll see you again for Anka Hunt part whatever because this is going to take a while, I think. Yeah.